Hello and welcome back to Suspended Fanimation. I am your host, Dennis Bethalkis, and this is The Tick, Season 2, Episode 9, In the Woods. How's everyone doing tonight? Yeah, everyone doing good? Yes, this is the, we're, we're closing in on the final couple episodes here of the final season on Amazon anyway, of The Tick. So hopefully this thing gets picked up. Hashtag save the tick. Spread the word. Spread it loud. Spread it wide. Spread it proud. There we go. So before I start, I'm going to say, spoiler alert, I am going to spoil the shit out of the episode. If you haven't seen it, what the fuck have you been doing for the last couple of months? Go and watch it. Come on back. This will be a video. You can comment down below in the comment section. All right. Thank you, Viking bitch, for the paddle. And for just being an all-around great person. Not you, Moo Fenobi. I'm talking about your girlfriend. Yes. <laughs> all right. Give me a little bit of water here since it is hot as fuck out here. Uh, yeah, exactly. The fuck you've been doing for a couple of months. Exactly, Moo Fenobi. Come and watch The Tick by now. Come on, it came out in February. Yeah. So, of course, uh, we open up with bubble time with the kids. Uh, Arthur and the Tick are, are blowing bubbles for the for the kids. And uh, the Tick has never seen bubbles before. And uh, Arthur even comments, he goes, you've never seen bubbles, really? And the phone rings and he goes and Tick goes and grabs the phone. And he goes, hold on a minute, I'll get him. And it's an emergency. And he brings it into Arthur. They've made the flag five. So they've made, they, they are the finalists or they are the finalists. They've been picked for it and uh, they're going down to Aegis to uh, get, you know, I guess oriented, you know, get their orientation going for the flag five and they're in the ready room and they're joined by Sage, the supernumerary, who is also a member of the flag five bronze star because everyone knows bronze star. And Joan of Arc. <laughs> yes, she has made it. And they all get their manuals. And they, of course, get coupons that are good throughout the city. Uh, there's different establishments throughout the city. And uh, I love how they're going through the manual. And there's actually uh, some mock-ups of what they would look like in their Flag 5 attire in order to unify them a little bit more. And at one point, Sage is pissed off because the third eye has been covered over by a uh, flag symbol. He goes, that's just blasphemous, <laughs> which I thought was funny. The super nipple. Yes, exactly. And uh, of course, they get their flock flare uh, watch, which is a signal watch, much like the, uh, the Fantastic Four had with their, uh, you know, their flare symbol that they had. Well, actually, Johnny, you know, Johnny Storm was the one that used to do the the flare for the Fantastic Four, but still blasphemous. Yes, it was blasphemous. So sacrilegious, however you want to say it. Hey, Chuckle Fox. Exactly. Hey, Stanley Tweedle. Glad you can join us. I'm glad you're back from vacation. You bastard. <laughs> anyway. So the guys have gotten sworn in. They do their little hero walk down the ramp with their new manuals and their rock in the flock flare. And uh, they end up uh, meeting Flexon and Flexon tells the guys that uh, Love Circulis needs to, get, needs to get on board with his plan to uh, the coercion plan in order to get Love Circulis out of prison. And she does not want to talk. And because uh, you got to chew her ear a little bit and get her to talk, you know, to, to get her to see things my way. And the tick's like, I don't see how chewing on her ear is going to help anything. And, you know, he doesn't get that, of course. So um, Hobbs, in the meantime, has, passes by the boys and he's got some cake from their uh, flag five uh, orientation there. And he says, oh, the, the cake was too, uh, too good to pass up. I hope you don't mind. And he walks down and we see him walking down the stairs and, into some hidey hole in Aegis and he's walking down this really long hallway with all these doors and he inputs his handprint goes inside and who do we find inside but overkill overkill strapped to a chair and yeah he is one of the bad guys Hobbs is one of the bad guys we find out ah uh, yeah and uh the guys end up going over to Lips Hercules 
to convince her to go along with uh, Flexon's plan in order to bring the kids in to show that she was coerced by the Donnellys by them taking her kids. And at first she doesn't want to do this and they talk her into it and she finally says, okay, we'll go with your plans. In the meantime, Arthur gets a call from Dot and says uh, he needs to go out to Danger Boat, out to the boat. And uh, he goes, we have a boat? And Danger Boat, yeah, I'm the boat, is what Danger Boat says. I love how they kind of remind him. And uh, that he needs to go out there and they need to actually talk about Overkill. Overkill being gone, of course, at this point. In the meantime, Lint has gone back to the motel and uh, meets up with Frank and shares with Frank that being a member of the Flag Five has a lot of perks. She has access to all these new weapon weaponry, <clears throat> excuse me, gadgets, and also she gets the keys to Aegis. And she wants Frank to come along with her. And he goes, I don't know. I don't know if that's a path I can follow. Uh, Edgelord comes in. And he goes, wait a minute. Is he going along with you? And Edgelord's like, yeah, I'm her new sidekick. And Frank's like, yeah, you know what? Nope, can't do it. I'm out. So he leaves. Tick and Arthur, in the meantime, are introduced to John Wu, uh, a.k.a. Walter, aboard Danger Boat, and they're freaking out. And I love how the Tick goes, my feet don't feel so good all of a sudden. <laughs> the whole thing with Walter going, how do your feet, how are your feet? Are your feet good? How do they feel? And, um, you know, they're, they're pretty much kind of... Uh, freaking out about this and that's when dot's like you know what we need to find overkill and she goes uh this is what we saw from the explosion and we see this little capsule coming up out of the explosion that had overkill in it and it's an aegis cap capsule uh so they know that aegis is involved and uh arthur goes wait a minute that's a pretty large explosion how did you get out of this and danger Book goes oh dot used her ability and he goes ability what ability and dot kind of blows him off and just kind of turns it back like we need to find overkill you know and all this kind of stuff and yeah so this is the second time she's been kind of able to pull the wool over arthur's eyes by distracting him a little bit and um yeah we end up having uh you know they basically say that arthur needs to call rathbone on the uh the five alarm flag phone and tell him what's going on and uh where you know basically that overkill the agent that he's looking for uh, was abducted by the Duke, who is another person that they are looking for. Aegis is looking for, and uh, he really doesn't want to do it, but he gets talked into it. So Hobbs, in the meantime, is uh, talking to Overkill and brings his eyes back online and all this, and uh, he sees that it's Hobbs, and Hobbs reveals himself to be the Duke. So yeah, he says the guy that he thought was the Duke was actually just some guy named. Uh, Garrett, uh, Carl, Carl, that's what it was. It was Carl. So Carl was the one who got beheaded. Oh, poor Carl. But uh, he also says that uh, the little chips that he was using to make people into human furniture, that was actually a mind control device that uh, he is going to use to mind control categories. And that uh, because Sharpshooter had been brought in and was the first category to be made an agent. That's when his idea came about was to make category uh, and also his implants and his hands gave Hobbes the idea to take over their minds so that they can uh, control categories. Because as he says, Superion was the one that introduced superheroes to the world, essentially. There was no superheroes until Superion arrived. Once he arrived, it was kind of like an infection and superheroes or categories started to appear out of, you know, out of the woodwork, if you will. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, Viking bitch, if Walter knows martial arts and fights with his feet. Well, he does know martial arts. We know this. Uh, and so he does fight with his feet every now and then as well. So, yeah. And yes, both are sound theories. Exactly. And so he ends up uh, injecting overkill. You know, he injects one of those chips into overkill's ear because this is going to be really painful. And he injects him and takes him over takes over his mind. Arthur, in the meantime, uses the five alarm flag phone to call Rathbone and Rathbone's like, what is it, boy? What, what's going on? What's the emergency? 
and uh, Arthur's trying to have he's having a little problem spitting it out, and uh, he gets a call from his mom, and he goes, "It's my mom," and he goes, "Wait, it's about your mom?" And he goes, "No, she's on the other line." He goes, "Well, didn't you answer it, boy? You leave me on hold. I'll I'll sit here on uh, Hamlet Helmet Cam hold for a little while. Just answer the answer your mom." So of course he answers the phone, and his mom just wants to know um, if he heard anything about Walter. What's going on with Walter? And uh, of course he hasn't. And he says, oh, I'm in a meeting. I really need to do something. And he goes back to Rathbone and tells him everything. And I love, we're back on the boat there. And uh, the tick says, we're all in the woods. And Walter says, what do you mean? He goes, it wasn't too long ago. I, you know, I was okay. He goes, but now even I'm lying. And he goes, where does it all end? What does destiny have to show us? Uh, what is, what does she want from us? And uh, we have, you know, Walter says, maybe the truth is, uh, maybe that truth is precious. And just then Arthur arrives. And of course, he's going to meet, well, they're all going to meet Rathbone in an abandoned Aegis uh, facility. Which always sounds kind of ominous when you're going to meet somebody in an abandoned facility. And uh, of course, they make, they tell Walter that afterwards, uh, both Dot and Arthur go, you're going to talk to mom and tell her what's going on. You're going to tell her the truth. And he agrees, of course. So Lint, in the meantime, was having a conversation with herself in the mirror at the motel. And uh, she goes, why'd you choose that name, Joan of Arc? She goes, because I thought it'd be funny. I like the pun. And she goes, no, remember when we were in the orphanage and uh, you loved the story of Joan of Arc? She was a hero. That's the reason why you chose that name. And it starts becoming apparent that maybe... Miss Lint is not just acting that maybe she is really a hero at this point. So good night, move for Nobi. So the group meet Matt Rathbone and give him the chip, which was uh, in one of the human furnitures there. And uh, he sees it's an Aegis chip and says, you know what? He goes, I'm going to take care of this. You guys stand down. And Tick wants to bring in flag five into this, of course. And uh, he's like, no, not going to make that the first mission to give Aegis its own black eye from by having the Flag Five do it. He goes, I'm going to take care of it. Uh, that's the end of story, and I'm going to do it alone. And he walks off again. Bad idea, but they decide to go along with it. Uh, so Walter ends up going over to Arthur's place, where uh, Joan, of course, is with Kevin, and they're taking care of the kids. And he comes in in his tactical gear. She's like, Walter? And he says, Joan, we need to talk. And of course, you know, he's going to tell her the whole thing. In the meantime, Rathbone calls in Hobbs and has the little chip down there on the uh, table and says, hey, this is one of your mind control devices. He goes, this is unacceptable then and it's unacceptable now. He goes, you have no place in here at Aegis. He's basically firing him at this point. And uh, Hobbs tells him, you had no place when you brought in categories and made them agents. He goes, but we're going to rectify that mistake right now. And that's when you see Overkill on the roof with Rathbone in his sights. And he shoots Rathbone in the head through the, uh, the glass. And that's where we leave off with the episode with Rathbone dead on the floor and Hobbs, you know, twirling his mustache, if you will. Mwahaha. Yeah. So not a bad episode. We had some, you know, we had a lot of movement going on here and it moved the story forward. Uh, yeah, it wasn't an action heavy episode or anything like that, but it was still pretty damn good. Yeah. All right. What was the whole thing with the feet? Yeah, the whole thing with the feet. I don't know. I really don't know what Walter, maybe he's just in defeat. You never know. You know, some weirdos are like that. Um, and I found my a scorpion in my room. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, talking about Stanley's vacation. There we go. Yeah, I don't know what a vacation is either. I don't get paid enough for that. Um, yeah, I'm extremely sad that they canceled such a great show. Exactly, Viking Bitch. For those of you who, you know are still watching, you know, of course, uh, hashtag save the tick, go out there and try and get the tick picked up by, you know, Netflix, somebody else, somebody who's going to be, you know, give it a little bit of love. And, um, it, it's a good show. It's got a good vibe to it. It's got a good story to it. It's got great characters. It's 
decades in the making, uh, this show. It literally is. I mean, this started in the 80s, the late 80s. Wow. Uh, now I think about it in the cartoon in the 90s, uh, you know, the early 2000s, we had the live action series, uh, the first live action series. And then, of course, now we have the second live action series. And there really is nothing bad about this show. All the iterations of The Tick are awesome. It's a great show. It's a great character. It's a great world that Ben Edlin has built here. And if you're not familiar with it, take a look at it. I mean, uh, it, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And they're not spending a ton of money on this. We can tell. But that's even better that they're not spending a ton of money on it and still giving a great story. So, yeah. No, the actor always plays squirmy guys. Yes, exactly, Stanley. Yeah, Arthur is always kind of squirmy. I actually uh, met him sitting next to Ben Edlin a couple of years ago when, before The Tick actually came out and they weren't really promoting it, uh, but he was sitting with Ben Edlin at uh, New England Comics at the booth and Ben was signing Tick copies and he asked me, he goes, you want me to sign it? And I was like, all right, sure. And I, I actually have it sitting nearby, as a matter of fact, not near enough where I can go and get it without having my headphones pull out, but still nearby. Yeah. Uh, I think he wrote not in the face is what he wrote in there, which is Arthur's tagline is not in the face uh, in the cartoon. Yeah, uh, not to get hit in the face. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I've been a fan since the comics too, Viking bitch. Uh, like I said, I had the original run, the original uh, 12, 13 episodes that Ben Edlin had written. That was all he worked on was on the, the first 12 or 13 ep uh, issues. I can't remember exactly how many. And um so I had like the very first prints that I sold to uh, Jamie Newbold there uh, over at Southern California Comics. And like I said before, over at uh, when we went over to Free Comic Book Day, I saw them sitting up on the on the shelf. Number one was going for 40 bucks. Yeah. I'm not buying it back, though. It's too expensive for me. <laughs> Even though they're all first print editions and in excellent, excellent, excellent shape because that's how I keep uh, my comics are in excellent shape. Well, for the most part, when I used to collect. So, yeah. Hey, Mr. Roboto, you just came in near the tail end here. So, uh, if you like what you see here, hit the subscribe button right down here. And also hit the like button. If you don't like what you see, you can hit the dislike button. I just ask that you go down below in the comment section and give me some constructive criticism about what you don't like. Someone actually hit a dislike uh, on my Saturday morning blast off and never said anything. I mean, come on, what the hell? And of course, they did it while I was on the air, which was even more just kind of disturbing. But anyway neither here nor there. If you want to see when I'm going to be on live again, you can hit the bell down below as well. If you've already hit it, don't hit it again. It will unclick it. You can go into the bell settings, get as as many or as little notifications as you want. Uh, it's still a 50-50 chance that you will see that notification because that is the way Google runs or YouTube runs, I guess you could say. And... You can actually see what my schedule is going to be up because I have it on my webpage at suspendedfanimation.com. It's also on my webpage, uh, my Facebook page. Uh, look for Suspended Fanimation. You can find it there. You'll also see pretty much all the articles that I uh, allude to in Saturday Morning Blast Off. I post them there as well throughout the week. And I have a Twitter. I have an Instagram. The Instagram is going to be a lot more active once Comic-Con rolls around. And I also have a Patreon, but I don't have any tiers set up as of yet. And yes, I am pretty punctual. I'm usually within 15 minutes, and I'll let you guys know, usually ahead of time. So, yeah. Ah, uh, Ejar, you missed it just a little bit, huh? Uh, yeah, you can watch the replay. That's good. Uh, Dennis, you ever try uh, consider trying out for Law and Order? I think you'd fit as a specialist. I, I don't know. I think I would play uh, Killer Number One or uh, Victim Number Three. Those are the two spots that I'm 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 hoping for. Fingers crossed. Actually, Thug Number One. Yeah, that's what I would go for. 
Oh, if you're still on the fence about joining up, by the way, there's going to be a video that pops up here. It's going to take a video from my vast video library, and it's going to match it to all the nasty stuff you've been watching on YouTube because YouTube keeps track of all that stuff. And it's going to take a video from my video library and pop it up there that best matches your wants and needs. And uh, you're going to see up in this corner is going to be a video of my last video, which was Saturday morning blast off, which is right there. Yes. Tomorrow I'm off. Uh, Wednesday is going to be Krypton. It really is going to be Krypton this time around. Yes. Uh, the first episode of season two of Krypton is going to be on and we're going to hopefully get some tiny Lobo going on. Uh, Thursday is going to be iZombie, the last season of iZombie. Friday is the now canceled Swamp Thing. I'm still going to continue with Swamp Thing. And of course, Saturday morning is the aforementioned Saturday morning blast off where I take the genre news of the week and talk about that and any other genre stuff you guys want to talk about because it's a lot of fun. Yeah, last Saturday morning blast off was actually pretty damn good, I have to admit. And I'm not just saying that because I'm on it. But uh, are we talking porn or Animal Planet? Uh, both. Why can't I put both? So, <laughs> Tiny Lobo. I may watch your review, but I don't think I can stomach Krypton. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you, Viking bitch. It's it's a it's one of those things, like I said, it's like Gotham in a way where I can't believe it's on, but at the same time, I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe this is on. You know? Yeah. Uh I I don't think so, Pen Farm Girl. I think Lobo is supposed to be in the first episode, from what I understand. I think they probably introduced him in the last like three seconds. Lobo is not enough. No Krypton for me either, huh? Yeah. I'm just trying something out a little bit. That's all. We'll see what happens. Everything else that I actually cover ends up getting canceled. So, I mean, I figured if I can cover something that everyone wants to get canceled, what the hell? And have a little fun in the meantime, too. And not be mean about it, you know? A Gotham Ejar was a, uh, as I put it, was a dumpster fire on top of a flaming train that was out of control, that was uh, heading towards a uh, three-mile island as it was melting down uh, while the forest was burning around it. That's pretty much what it was. But you wanted to watch it anyway because you just wanted to see what the hell was going to happen. Gotham had some good characters, some good acting in it, and um, Barbara Keene was awesome. I loved Barbara Keene. She was just actually crazy. The actress who plays her is awesome. Yeah. Just kind of like Stephen Ogg. Stephen Ogg plays Flexon you know, on the tick here. He was in The Walking Dead, and he played one of uh, Negan's right-hand man, uh, who was just a dick, a complete and total dick. And to see him go from that character to Flexon is pretty damn funny, uh, but also just kind of amazing at the same time. Yeah. It was like drinking orange juice and milk at the same time. <laughs> wow, Ejar, that's actually kind of that that's kind of weird. Uh you know what happens when orange juice and milk mix, right? Uh the the acid in the in the orange juice curdles the milk. So yeah, you really don't want to do that. That that's just kind of nasty. And plain wrong, exactly, Jar. I'd say that the same thing. Yes. Uh, Talking Dead reviews, yes, maybe. Oh, uh, no. I I honestly don't. Uh, I, I was actually on uh, Talking Dead. God, it was years ago, a couple of years ago. Uh, you'll see the back of my head in it. But I came this close to getting to asking my question. I was sitting in the front there and um, he ended up doing he did a variation of my question, I guess you could say, and they used somebody else. Because I guess I was just too ugly for TV, which, you know, happens. I understand. Yeah, it does have Chris Hardwick, I know. Yes, I, I, I know who Chris Hardwick is. Yeah, I actually ran into him uh, before he was doing Talking Dead. 
uh actually i take that back he was just starting talking dead it was the first year that uh walking dead was gonna be on that was was on tv that's right it was just becoming a phenomenon uh so this is image comics was doing their image comic convention and this is in oakland and chris hardwick happened to be walking across he was doing something there uh I, oh i know what he was he was moderating the panel that they were doing and he just happened to be walking across the floor and we're like hey and he said hey you know just kept walking so no he doesn't seem like he's a dick uh ejar he just normal everyday guy you know Good Omens was great. I'm going to rewatch the whole thing. Yes, I will get to Good Omens. I know. I still haven't. I know. I'm a bad person. So you, do you guys really want me to do it? Because usually everything, like I said, everything I review lately seems to get canceled. So uh, I, I know. I know I have to watch it. I got busy last night. Sorry. I ended up. I actually turned on Conan the Barbarian. They had it on uh, the, one of the movie channels because I was doing some other stuff and something I could have mindless. And then it rolled straight into Conan the Destroyer. And I was like, all right, sure. What the hell? And I still got work I had to do anyway. <laughs> so let the bloodbath continue. Yes. Um, I'm pretty sure the bloodbath will continue. There's There's been some talks lately. I, I might do a... I might do a video tomorrow. I don't know. Just kind of a short video, kind of like what I did with Swamp Thing being canceled. So it's a one-shot series. You never know, Ejar. They they say that uh, you know you can always build a sequel to something. All you do is time travel and watch supergirl maybe it gets i do watch supergirl mr roboto i just don't cover it that's all because there's not that much there to cover there would be a five second review it's really not that much uh yeah they continued happy they did continue happy from the comic yes and look what that got them because they couldn't come up with a really good story or I should say they came with a good story at the end, but they didn't think it through in the beginning. I think they just rushed it is all it was. But I have a feeling that Netflix may pick that one up. They have been getting really, really good uh, uh, watch value out of the first season that they've been replaying. I mean, it's it's really high up there. Really, really high up there. They don't release their numbers, but they've been impressed by how many people have actually watched Happy. Yeah. So we'll see what happens with that. But anyway, I'm going to let you guys go because I know it's late for you guys out on the East Coast. It's not for me. And uh, I got a little dog that's itching to go out and walk some more in this freaking heat that we got going on. Wow, I'm sitting in air-conditioned comfort. Uh, Netflix might be interested in happy, yes. They might, might is the operative term. We'll see what happens. So, uh, tell the dog we say hi. Hey, Pepper, they all say hi. She's unimpressed. She's laying down. You need a robotic dog walker. Hopefully one that has comes with twin automatic uh, machine guns, too. Take out any Rottweilers and pit bulls that go after her. Anyway, not that I condone violence to animals or anything like that. Pepper is very rarely impressed. She really is. I took her to the dog fair and she would have none of it whatsoever. She was like, it's too fucking hot out here. Uh, I'm going to go lay in the shade. I don't want to sniff any more butts. Uh, I sniffed two. I'm done. Let's go. That's pretty much how it was. I mean, they even had like doggy Froger and all that kind of stuff. Nope. She had a couple of licks of it and was like, I am done with that. That does not impress me. You know, bacon treats. Nope, didn't impress her. Uh, does Pepper kick dog in the balls or only she only hit, kicks humans in the balls? She kicks humans in the crotch. And it's kind of funny. So uh, she kicks men in the balls and she kicks uh, women in the breast. Don't ask me. 
Uh, she knows how to do it. She really does know how to to hurt humans of all genders. She is uh, not discriminatory. She is spoiled, Pen. She is very, very spoiled. She doesn't seem to think so. But uh, yes, everyone who knows her uh, knows that she is a spoiled little brat. Yes. She is talented. She is very talented and very strong. Her back legs, I swear to God, I call her my little anchor. She's only uh, 17 pounds. And if I try and really pull on her with the, with the leash, she's like a little anchor. You can't, uh, you have to literally walk up to her and pick her up. Does she do the kicking when she's mad? She does the kicking whenever she feels like it, Viking bitch. Yeah. Uh, yes, she is a cat in dog's clothes, uh, Warren. There are pictures of her uh, sitting on top of the couch, like laying on top of the couch, you know, the back of the couch kind of thing, laying on the arm of the couch. Uh, she does all kind of weird cat cat like things every now and then. So, yes. But I'm sure that's what everyone wants to hear about. It's my dog. <laughs> so, again, uh, for those of you who uh, are interested in subscribing but still are on the fence, take a look at the video up here and hit the subscribe button down there and the like button over there, someplace over there. Otherwise, I'm going to let you guys go for the evening. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, Ejar, Scuffle Leather Art by Viking Bitch, Mr. Robato, Pen Farm Girl, Warren Akuma, and of course, Mui Fenobi, who had to leave early, that punk. Uh, and Stanley Tweedle, of course. Stanley Tweedle, back from vacation, all rested up and ready. Thank you all, and also all of you out there who took the time out to actually watch this video, and hopefully you watch it all the way through. If not, I don't blame you. That's fine. There's a lot of videos out there. But uh, again, take a look at the videos, hit the subscribe, hit the like button, hashtag save the tick. I will see you on Wednesday for Krypton. Thank you all. Uh, don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. Otherwise, you may get kicked in the balls by a very small dog who just really does it on purpose. Thanks, everybody. Good night. <laughs>